Hello everyone and welcome back to another Railway Model Store review. Today we're taking a look at the C38 Class Pacific, which is an Australian model and is actually made by Hornby. And these are available in quite limited numbers. Uh, only a few shops do have these at the moment. But we've got some, so I thought, hey, let's make a video on it. I'm kind of interested in the Australian stuff. So let's take a look. Okay, so it's not the most interesting looking box. It's quite interesting that it's got a see-through front. You don't really get that too often these days. Uh, as normally manufacturers sort of do the whole boxing and you slide out uh, the packaging. But you can see it's also polystyrene in there as well, which again isn't super common these days. Uh, but I believe this is actually a Lima tooling, um, so I think it still uses the sort of older uh, Lima style of box. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. I guess it just makes life easier and you don't have to go through a ton of packaging. But there you go, just slide it out as normal. But let's take a look at the box anyway. So yeah, you can see up here we've got the Australian Railway Model logo, never seen that before. Uh, you've got the name of the engine across the top here, so it's a C38 class Pacific uh, Express Passenger Locomotive. Oh my god, you can see me, that's crazy. Uh, HO gauge, um, got some bits on the bottom here, Ro replica scale, scale locomotive. Uh, you see here the number of the engine, which is 3803. Uh, on the back here we've got some information, so feel free to pause here if you fancy reading any of that. I think you can get that all in there, almost bigger box than I thought. Uh, it's got a diagram at the bottom there as well, which is quite cool. Uh, you can see this is also DCC ready, which is good to know. I believe it's an eight pin DCC decoder, but it can be fitted. Uh, so yeah, that is the box. And then obviously inside the box come your standard stuff. You've got your, you've got your instructions. You need to lift out this bit of plastic here that covers the top. Just fold that over. And then we need to get this bit of plastic out of the way and then we can carefully take the model out of the packaging. Okay, so here's the C38 class out of the box. It was a little bit tricky, I will admit. I'm not a, not a huge fan of polystyrene, I'm not gonna lie, I find it an absolute pain. Um, but at least the loco is protected. So if we start by taking a look at the front of the engine, I think the most obvious thing you can see is the streamlining. That's uh, quite an interesting design, I think. It's a bit different to the streamlining you get in the UK, but you can see uh, that the front of the boiler is sort of cone shaped and it has a big headlight which does function in the middle there you can see that there is no chimney sticking out the top it is just flat in line with the rest of the body and you can see that the streamlining uh, continues down the side as well and it looks really good cool. i wouldn't say it's properly it's not like super streamlined like a mallard would be but it's sort of partly streamlined um, that's what i'd say anyway but yeah if we have a look at the front here we can see on either side of the buffer beam we have some step ladders look quite good they've got rivets on so they're quite well detailed there uh, we've got two buffers uh, at the front here uh, they're not sprung uh, but you can see they're silver and then black so that's quite cool uh, they've been painted in different colors uh, which you probably wouldn't get on some railroad models um, but yeah we've got some, some piping here and of course the coupling hook and here we've got 3803 which is painted in big white numbers which I think looks really really cool on this side of the engine uh, we have this rather large pump looking thing i can't tell you what that is so if anyone does know let us know in the comments um, but there's a number of pipes coming out of that you see the struts that are holding that up and it has rivets all over it there's a lot of really good detail on this particular section here that is only on one side of the engine so i'm not i'm not sure what that's about but either side uh, of the buffer beam again continuing up we can see we've got some step ladders uh, there's one here and then there's another one here that goes on to the running plate of the loco so that's quite cool to see. There's a number of rivets on here as well, uh, and some other bits of detail part, uh, which I presume is for fitting the Australian equivalent of head codes. I don't know what they're called. And um, we've also got two red struts at the front here as well. If we look at the front of the boiler, as I mentioned earlier, we've got the big uh, headlight, and we've got some three, stri three red stripes that go either side of the boiler and then carry on uh, down the side of the engine, which is looking really good there. Uh, this boiler is very well detailed, you can see the hinges for how they can open the boiler. Uh, you can see there is some painted on uh, white dots on either side. Um, and you can also see that the rivets continue all the way around. And at the top we've got some more streamlining, uh, which is really well moulded as well. And looks really, really good there. If we take a look at the side of the engine now, uh, you can see there is actually a pretty impressive amount of detail here. We'll start by looking down at the bottom here, so you can see um, the cylinders here, um, which has a lot of detail on You can see it's outlined in red, and there's a number of rivets and moulded detail on there as well, which looks really, really great. 
We've got some pretty complicated uh, valve gear here, which looks really, really good. Um, and you can see that we've got the uh, three main driving wheels here and slightly different design to British wheels. Uh, it sort of reminds me of the original streamlined Merchant Navy class, um, which is sort of bigger wheels um, with these sort of oval cuttings around, which I think looks quite good. Then at the front, we do obviously have the uh, bogey at the front for the 462. If we look at the side here, uh, you can see that the red lining continues all the way down and around the cab. Uh, you can see there's a lot of rivets on here as well, which is really, really cool. And then some more molded detail here. As I mentioned earlier, we've got the red stripes, which continued off from the front of the boiler. And as well as this, we've got some piping that continues from the front of the boiler and then follows all the way down uh, with a number of struts holding up as well, which looks really, really good. Uh, we've got some more molded detail all along the roof here. As you can see, it's sort of sectioned and this all looks really, really good. There's no issues with the molding here at all. Uh, you can see the rivets around the chimney here. Um, or what would be the chimney if it wasn't streamlined. Um, and yeah, so this all looks really, really good along the top here. You can see where the whistles are as well. Um, so that's quite cool. Uh, further down here, we have the, I think this is the reverser. I might be completely wrong, uh, but this looks quite good. So you've got the strut that goes along here, uh, this bulky area here, a bit of silver painted on, and then the piping that continues further along. On the side of the firebox, again, we've got a lot of rivets, a lot of molded detail, which looks really great. Uh, so that's quite nice to see, given that this is a fairly old tooling. Moving further along to the cab area, we can see that the roof of the cab has a number of rivets on. You can see this is different colour to the rest. Obviously, this is a big silver roof, which I think looks quite good. Sets it out a little bit from the rest of the engine. Uh, we've got rivets around the cab windows here. We've got some grab irons on either side of the cab window, and we've got some here as well. The window isn't filled in, but you can see it's got a silver outline. Uh, we can see the number 3803 here again along with a lot more rivets and various bits of piping along the side here. And as I mentioned, the red lining does continue onto the cab. Uh, we've got some bit, bit, of, bit of detail down here. We've got some piping and we've also got the rear bogey, which is a very different design to what you get on a lot of English uh, locomotives. I think it was quite good down there. Um, so yeah, if we take a look at the tender now, uh, you can see we've got a little bit of interior detail. We've got some coal uh, that's spilling down here. And you can see there's a lot of rivets and detail on the inside of that as well. We've got the step ladder to get up as well as the handrail. We've got the red lining continuing all the way around the tender. There's no markings on the tender. I sort of expect it in England, it, you know, you'd have your British Railways logo or whatever. Uh, but evidently in Australia, they do not do the same sort of thing, or at least on this particular engine anyway. I don't think the coal looks brilliant, but I think it's okay. Uh, it could be a lot worse. I think this could be improved. Potentially, um, but this is a very limited run of models, so I, the chances of making these again with any improvements are very, very slim. Uh, at the back of the tender here, you can see we've got the rivets, um, we've got the opening to put the water in, and also with the rivets, uh, they, there's a lot of rows of them all down the tender, which looks quite good. And um, we've got two bogies here, these are fixed, these don't actually turn at all, um, so I think they might struggle a little bit on your tighter radius uh, bits of track. So let's take a look at the back of the tender now. We'll do a little bit of running. Okay, so here we have the back of the tender. You can see there is quite a big ladder up here. Half of it is red, half of it is black. Looks quite good. Uh, we've got the buffers and silver on either side. Again, as we had on the front buffer beam, we've got two bits of piping, uh, symmetrical on either side. We have got a KD coupler, uh, but this is an NEM pocket, so you can switch it out for a British coupler uh, if you wanted to. Also on the back, we've got a little bit of piping and a small light, uh, as well as, of course, Big number, 3803 written on the side as well here, and another grab iron. So yeah, pretty cool looking model I think, so let's get it running. So once I got it on the track and got it running, I noticed it was very sturdy, very smooth, uh, wasn't having any issues with my track, uh, and during the summer my track does tend to have some issues, so it's good to see that it was coping with anything uh, completely fine. We've got it coupled up to a small rake of GWR wagons, uh, I don't have any Australian wagons, but I've got a translator wagon there, which is that green one you just saw. Uh, and that's got a British coupling on one side and the knuckle coupler on the other side. So that's, uh, you know, useful uh, for that sort of thing. Uh, so obviously if you were to buy this engine, uh, either you could uh, swap the coupler to, so it would work with whatever stock you've got, or you have the option of just making a translator wagon. Uh, which is a nice little project and just a cool thing to have but anyway as for the actual model itself uh, given that it's quite an old lima tooling i was quite impressed with it i think the cab details may be lacking a little bit and i like i said i don't really like the coal that much uh, but beyond that i think it's a very solid model 
Uh, there's a lot of really good detail on here. The big light on the front works really well. It's a really good runner. Uh, looks really solid. And it does have a quite a high retail price of £229. Uh, but as of this week, uh, it's currently available at £199.95. So it is discounted. Uh, and again, that is still quite high. Uh, but you've got to consider the fact that this is quite a sought after model. It's not going to be produced again. And you're going to want to get one while you can. Uh, as these are going to be, you know, they're going to raise in price for collectors. Uh, I reckon over the next couple of years. So even if you weren't going to buy one to run it, I highly recommend purchasing one of these. And we've got a few of them available. Uh, so if you do want one, remember to use the code RMS YouTube, and obviously you can get an extra 5% off on top of that. Uh, so yeah, on the overall, really solid model. And uh, I hope you guys have some opinions about it as well and let us know. And uh, if you do buy one, I really appreciate it. And thank you very much for watching. Goodbye for now.